we're going to jump into motion executions. Now, before you get started, it's important to add some sort of override or some sort of limiting agent to make sure that the program runs at a slower than max value. If you use the get application control, you can do this by using the set application override method. We're just going to pass in a double and that would allow us to limit the application to 10% of its max speed. You can also do this on each motion. So on the robot object, you actually have the ability to do two types of motions, either the move or move async. A move just basically sends the command of execution to the motion planner and then doesn't return until it's done. Now you can do PTP or LIN or position hold motions. Look at the Java docs for more details on them. There's a few other ones that are also available. We're going to work with PTP motions and we're going to go ahead and get our frame or the, the position in space that we're moving to via the application data. We're going to use the method get frame and then we're going to just type in where that frame is. Now make sure to use a forward slash that gets on a lot of people. Now here again you can set your velocities and accelerations to make sure that the application is actually running slower than its max capacity and you can even do a set mode so there we just set that the motion was carried out by a position control mode however that's the default mode so you don't really need to do that writing this would do the same thing just implementing a motion control mode to implement this move now if we throw this motion into a i motion container we basically get some additional features or methods like get last executed or wait this motion. So it works really well with async motions because move async basically sends this motion command command to the motion planner and then returns to your code and continues to run. So if we did an imc.await, then we would await for that motion container to complete the command that's within it. So we're going to also show you another way of doing this just with a normal while loop. So we can do if the IMC is not finished, then we can check some condition. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and create a variable of type for sensor data. And that will, we're going to import it, and then that will allow us to get some features from the robot, such as the external force torque. So we're going to give it a measured frame, which is the flange. You could add a tool into your class, which we'll learn about later and look at some force on a TCP or some other force on a, for example, tool or workpiece. But here we're just going to go ahead and pull that force data from the Z vector. So on the robot flange, that's the axis that is coming out of the robot, the Z axis. And we're going to get that force and we're going to get the Z value again. We are just trying to check to see if there's a force that we are experiencing externally on the robot flange. Now, we don't care if this is a positive or negative force, so we're just going to use the math library or the math class to get the absolute value and make sure that it's greater than 10, and then we're going to print something if that's the case. So here we're just going to print force and z vector and then kind of check what that force is that we actually got that passed our conditional statement. And then we'll cancel. The motion container so this should actually finish now when this does not pass our conditional statement so there is no force or it's less than 10 then we want to just sleep for 50 milliseconds to slow the processor so the cpu doesn't get taxed now anytime you do async motions it's always a good idea to implement an i error handler i error handlers are basically something that you can register if you say new I error handler, that's the interface that provides you with this override method. And you can get the failed container and get its command and put that to a string and see, you know, what was the command that actually the motion failed on. So this will return. And once you register it, you don't have to, you know, keep it in code. It just kind of listens. So we'll learn a lot more about listeners at a later point. But here's just a quick and important step in using move asyncs. Now there is a return value, so it returns to your code after it runs. And here we're going to return error handler action and application. So it should just end the application once it's run and it realizes, hey, there was an error in commanding. 
If you're doing normal motion command commands, you'll just use a normal try catch block. That's pretty straightforward for anybody who's used object oriented programming before. So there the git application control dot register move async error handler is how we actually register and we passed in its uh, name error handler as we wrote up above. So once that's done, we can jump and go ahead and try to run it. As you can see, I pushed a little bit on the robot and we got this detection and therefore it finished the motion and we can just run it again, try it one more time. There again, touch the robot and you can see that a force was triggered. Now, if we change the PTP motion to a limb motion and start with some weird configuration, we can see that it fails and then our, our error handler actually catches there.